going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. What's up, Jonathan? How you doing this morning? What up? What up? I'm doing good. 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 So, look, this is the fourth installment. Walking through the G code, um, we've been talking about the four components of it. The first one being gratitude. Now you start your day off with that. The second being genetics, what you're eating, you know, moving your body. Uh, the third being the grind, which is your work, and the fourth. Um, that we're going to talk about today, Jonathan, is your group. All right. And a group being who do you spend your time with? Who do, who's your circle? Who are you surrounded by? And, you know, one of the things that Ryan talks about in his book, and I think is super valuable, um, is we have, you, you can control who you surround yourself with, right? You control who's in your circle. Mm -hmm. You can't control your family of origin but you have a hundred percent control over your family of choice and you can create new family. You can create new friends. Um, and a, a big thing that he talks about and that I agree with a lot and I think has been super prevalent in my life over the years. And we talked about it even on, on previous episodes is just because people start with you doesn't mean they can go with you. And they, most of them probably won't finish with you either. And, you know, a thing that's interesting is like that family of choice. So, you know, within Apex, I joined in March of 2020. You know, these are people that, you know, we're supposed to be in Dallas every month. My schedule this year has been crazy and I'll be there next month mm -hmm. uh, in October, but I haven't been out there since May. I still talk to guys and girls in the group, um, you know, weekly, monthly, but I'm not there. We're, we, we try to get there once a month to be together. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a, a group of like minded people, all different backgrounds, um, you know, profession, skill sets, level of business. But the commonality is they're high achievers, you know, they grind hard, um, good human beings, um, no judgment, a mm -hmm. lot of accountability, and they're there to support each other. Yeah. And as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as high level executives, you know, high level salespeople that are in that group, you know, it's a, sometimes it's hard to find people that can kind of wrap their head around what it is that, that they're going through. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Especially because there could be people who are operating in businesses where it's like, there might not be any immediate competition, but there's also not anybody to learn from or group up with right. either. And so for me, I mean, there's, I'm probably a low dog on the totem pole for sure in the room. I mean, there's billion dollar businesses in there, you know, you know, multiple, you know, eight figure businesses in there. There's people, you know, that, you know, just start starting out. Um, but I'm definitely low end. And, and the reason I, I wanted to, to get into that group was to do that, to surround myself by people that maybe aren't necessarily where I'm trying to go, but they've been through things and aspects of business on their path and their journeys where I can learn and there's experience and I've got some experiences that I can share also that'll help somebody. Yeah. And so it's, it's not a competition thing in these rooms. Mm -hmm. It is a, how can we help each other? You know, this is, it's a safe spot. We can share, we can push each other, we can motivate each other. And so that apex, you know, in, in my group there, that is, that is part of my family of choice. You know, I, I choose to invest in them. They choose to invest in me. Um, we choose to commit a significant amount of resources, you know, to, to make this happen. Um, you know, my friends, I, I don't have a huge group of friends that I run around with you know, all the time. Um, used to be a lot more social, you know, than I am now. But the thing is, people aren't tracking with me, like, and I can't expect them to. Um, if I was still running around with a lot of people from 15, 20, 25 years ago, um, some of them I still do. But if they're not on the same mission as me, if they don't have the same focus as me, not saying one is better than the other, but you can't let it hold you back. And so oftentimes, you know, our friends um, that come up with us, most people get stuck in the, in the same cycle. And if you want to move beyond, 
you got to surround yourself with people that are in alignment with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm sure the audience will hear it on a future episode if we ever decide to go into my background and stuff, but I've yeah. definitely run with some uh, less than desirable groups. Sure, yeah. And um, I think it's important you noted that you need people who are there to push you to grow and not yeah. necessarily a group that is there just to support you. Because I've been in circles who are there right. where it's just solely yes man or just support yep. and you don't grow that way well and it's supporting you to do better as long as it's not better than me yeah that's right? also another so, really big mentality <laughs> here's here's the support you're fine but you got to stay in your lane of this bubble that we're in mm -hmm. and you know you can go ahead and, and chase your dreams and your desires but make sure you're at the house you know by 10 so we can get out to the club and go do our things and next thing you know the weekend's gone. You're rolling into Monday. You're tired. You're hung over. You're exhausted. You're not mentally prepared to go. Like you can't, you can't do those things. I, we get invited to stuff all the time. There's plenty of hours in the day that we can go and do things, mm -hmm. but I make decisions based on my time and my energy. What's the best use of it and going and chilling out just cause it's Friday and drinking and doing whatever that group of people love them. Nothing wrong with it. We just got different goals. And if I go get on those goals, they're like, oh, why do you work so much? I go, what the hell? Man, can you get off your phone for a little bit? <laughs> can you get off your phone? Can you just focus, be dialed in in this moment? I'm like, why? Why? Like, why aren't you working more? You're bitching about your circumstance. <laughs> Complain. Why, why aren't you working right now rather than being a case deep? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so it's, you got to make these decisions. And so for me, it just starts, you know, because there's, a, hey, can you come hang out? Hey, can we get together for lunch? Hey, can we do this and that? And you either with those groups, you either have to have those difficult conversations to push them away or just stop responding because you're focused on other things and they get the idea. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think it's important to note that just because someone isn't meant to be in your group, like people can be around you yes. for a lifetime or be in your life for a season. And it doesn't mean because they're not meant for that particular season in your life that you have to kind of banish them from the group. Yeah. You just kind of have to set healthy boundaries. Like, Hey, yeah. on Fridays, I'm just not replying to you because I stay late at the office. You like to go out and yeah. it's just something as simple as that. And people can take it however they may. Right. A lot of people though, get sensitive about it. And when people get sensitive, like that's stuff where I just don't have the energy for it. And oh, so yeah. you have to, again, you know, it's like, Hey, this person, is draining me. This individual's activities are draining me. This person's um, support <laughs> is lack of a better word is draining me. And it's getting you off topic. You're like, Oh, well, that's my cousin. I got to go hang out with them. That, that's my family. No, you really don't. Yeah, you don't. Because your cousin isn't going to be the one that helps you accomplish what it is you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's where it's like that family of origin it is great, but a lot of times people's families suck. Yeah. And another important question that I think is, is valuable for the listeners is how do you think people should define their groups based off social media? Because I believe we share a same school of thought where your Facebook friends or your Instagram followers are not your group. They don't define your norms yeah. or how you should be moving daily. Yeah. So that's really funny. So, um, you know, the last 18 months, my social media has taken a total shift. When I, when I log in, it's typically for work, um, doing some posts or whatever. And then, um, but when I scroll either my Instagram or Facebook, all I see is my family of choice. All I see is positive things. All I see is encouragement. All I see is um, my family of choice winning. Like I, it is rare. If I'm scrolling and I see some bullshit, I just go to the three dots, right? unfollow mm -hmm. it is done and i don't care if i've known them for 30 years if there's some bs complaining and like just nate like i just i'm out you know because it's not it's not a relationship that to me is active it's just one that's there and people get hung up because they're scrolling 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 and they got all these friends but it's all bs yeah and it's like there's just no need for it like when devin's on facebook she wants to see pictures of people's kids she wants to see stuff like that if anybody's got BS political stuff, she's just like unfollow, unfollow. Cause you don't, you don't realize like what you're consuming and how much negativity. Yes. There is. And it's all there. And so for me, all I see is people winning. And mm -hmm. when I see all my friends winning, 
I'm like, I got to step up. I want to win. Or I'm like, man, so-and-so is crushing it. They're 26 years old. I'm 42 damn years old. Like I got work to do because that's that, but that's what drives me. So my family of choice who I've brought in, like it motivates me. It helps me to be a, the best version of me. And I'm not the best version of me right now, but hopefully the work I'm doing today is going to help me be a better version of me tomorrow. And the work I do tomorrow to be a better version of me the next day. But if I'm constantly battling with energy against the negativity with family of origin or, or old friend groups and things like that, that just don't fit who you are now. It doesn't mean, like you said, to your point, that season, they weren't an important part of that. Every relationship has value. Good or bad outcome, there is value. There are lessons learned. There's that season, but people get hung up. It's like, well, man, they've been with me for 25 years. They got to stay with me. We've been friends since elementary school. I've made it. I got to bring them with me. No, you don't. You don't have an obligation to do that. You have to look out for yourself. You got to look out for your, your, your children, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, your spouse, your immediate family. And the real, really the only obligation that you have to people who I guess are no longer in your group or who you don't really run with is, like we said earlier, just continue to be a good person. None of, yeah. none of this conversation excludes you from being a good nope. person to those who aren't in your for group. Sure. It's just, it, it just, it's un, it's unnecessary energy. Exactly. We all have a limited amount of energy and time. Mm-hmm. And the more you can get it dialed in on the things that um, are suitable, like with your goals, and these aren't professional goals. Just personally, how do you want your life to look? How do you want your day to be? And people don't think about that. Everybody's so reactive. And it's just, and if you just are constantly pummeling yourself with that negativity, because of the people you choose to have in your group, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. It'll kill you emotionally. It'll kill you, kill you physically. It'll kill you spiritually. It was where you slam out. So, you know, it, that group is so important, guys. Your group of origin or your family of origin doesn't necessarily need to be the same as your family of choice. We all have options there. Now, I'm not saying don't stop talking to your mama. All right? That's not what I'm saying. But if your mama is a pessimist and she's constantly killing you with stuff and busting down every thought, dream, desire, goal that you have, you probably need to see her a little less. I'm being for real. Like that's, that's not going to help you. Like you have to focus on you because if you are not the best version of yourself and you are not working towards uh, becoming the best version of yourself, you're no good to anybody else. It's a waste of time and you got to be selfish in that regard. Yep. And that's hard. Very hard. That's really hard because you're more worried about hurting somebody's feelings than you are about improving yourself. Yeah. And you got to be selfish. My coach Thomas told me, he's like, man, you, you make a lot of decisions based on how, you know, what you think is the best benefit for a lot of people. And that, that's, that's fine. That's fine. But a lot of times our own personal potential is limited by our unwillingness to be selfish. Yeah. Selfish isn't always a bad thing. And I think there's wisdom in that. So that's group guys. You know, you want to be focused on your group of choice. Um, we're going to do another episode to wrap up the whole G code thing. And we're going to talk about kind of the impact it's had overall um, and kind of how it works when you bring all these things together. Um, but group of choice guys really audit your circle, know who's in your life, who's speaking into you and who's getting in your head. We love you. See you next week. Bye.